Yeah, I started off in QA uh, about four years ago at Origin, uh, testing games. Um, from there, I became a leader of uh, testing, uh, where I, was, I would be assigned a project and given a team to test that project. Uh, the last project I did for, in QA was Bioforge. Uh, about a year ago, I finished that project up, and Richard Garriott uh, asked me to come over and be an associ the associate producer on Ultima 9. Uh, at that time, uh, I decided that I wanted to get into making my own game and a multiplayer game. And uh, I moved, yeah, I moved up the ranks uh, just by being really noisy, uh, being obnoxious, coming up with really good ideas, suggestions during the testing process. Where, you know, I would say, you know, instead of just being typically, what would happen in the testing process is the testers would say, well, this part of the game isn't any fun, and that was it. Uh, but I really made a name for myself by saying, well, this isn't fun, but instead of having that here, why don't we replace it with this? So I always had a good idea to replace uh, my, you know, my crit to put with my criticisms. Uh, yeah, it is a really daunting task. It's a lot of responsibility. Uh, it was really shocking for me because when I initially came over, I was working on Ultima 9, you know, which is the flagship product of the company. And Ultima Online is going to be you know, our first online product. So yeah, there's a lot of pressure and a lot of responsibility. You know, I have a team of, you know, whereas in QA for testing a product, I, even when I was a QA leader, I only had like you know, four or five people under me. Now I've got a team of like anywhere between 12 to 20 people that are directly under me and I'm supervising. Uh, the pre-alpha test went fantastic. Uh, we were able to prove uh, uh, our basic technological concept which was can we make a game that can be played through uh, any internet access worldwide and still be an enjoyable experience regardless of uh, latency and things like that. Uh, we proved that. Um, one of the most interesting things that we got out of it though wasn't even the technological aspect because once we proved that, we proved that in the first day that we could do it. Uh, after that, what we got was the social aspect, was the social dynamic that happened between what the players did in the game. That was the most interesting thing that came out of it. Well, of course, Richard is the one who came up with the Ultima line in the first place. So since we are using the Ultima name and we are setting it in the Ultima universe, he has a big hand in it. Um, he's the executive producer. Um, he, he's the one who's really making sure that we are keeping uh, with the Ultima feel and look for the game. Uh, as you may not know, Richard Garrett's uh, persona in the Ultima games is Lord British. And when we started up the game, a group formed that their goal was to kill him. Immediately, as soon as that got out that that happened, another group of players formed to be his protectors. And they would travel around with him in a little bodyguard ring and protect him from these other players. From there, it just exploded. Uh, the players formed uh, over 25 guilds, each of which has their own website, their own mission statement. Um, there's a guild that protects new players. There's a guild that tracks down people who kill other players. Um, it's amazing. And, it's all, and all of these groups have alliances with each other other or they're at war with each other and there's spying that goes on you know some some players will be uh, say go join another group when they're really secretly a member of this other group and spy on what the other group is doing and then there all these double crosses will happen and it's you know amazing human nature just creeping in and we didn't have to do any of that we didn't set up any of these guilds we just provided this world for them to play in and they created it themselves Traditionally, uh, what a fantasy role-playing game has been, as you, the player, you play the what we call dungeon crawler, uh, the hero, the run through the dungeons, kill the monsters, collect the treasure. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a fully simulated world where not only do you, can you do that if you want to do that, but if you want to, say, be a shopkeeper, you want to sell weapons, you want to be, say, a trader, you want to go from town to town collecting, buying items and then selling them to somebody else in another town, you can do that. If you want to be, you know, have a ship and sail around, you can do that. We want to offer people other options other than the traditional role-playing options that other games give you. Uh, traditionally, uh, in an ultimate you have a set of reagents and you combine a, you know, uh, reagent 1, 2, and 3 to, to cast this certain spell. But what we've done is uh, we have a, a much larger list of reagents than normal and each of those reagents have similar attributes to each other and values. So what you can do is if you can't get, um, say, the ginseng, well you can 
in, in, when you cast a spell for that reagent, you could use a replacement for that. Now, that changes the spell somewhat. Um, it'll either change the uh, chance of you succeeding with that spell, or it might have a ba uh, you know, there might be some sort of backlash, some sort of side effect that you didn't foresee. So, for instance, if you replace uh, one reagent with another when you cast a fireball, well, instead of casting a fireball, you may light yourself on fire by accident because you've made that replacement. But it may work anyway. Well, number one, it's going to be set in Britannia. Uh, most of the familiar towns you're familiar with, Britain, uh, Jalome, Trinsic, all the towns that uh, traditional Ultima players know. In, in addition to that, we'll be familiar Ultima characters. Uh, Eola will be in Britain selling crossbows. Uh, Lord British will be there, and like I said before, the greatest thing about that is Richard Gary will actually be playing Lord British. Um, in addition to that, uh, we're, we're, it's the setting, the medieval setting that uh, Ultimas have always been in. Uh, runic, uh, which is the language of the land, will be in the game. Uh, uh, the monsters that have been in traditional Ultimas will be in there. It, it's, it's imagine, you know, Ultima, but playing with 2,000 of your best buddies. When we open up at Christmas, we'll be able to support 2,000 simultaneously at any given time. Uh, but we've designed the system to be easily expandable. We can uh, plug in servers, add T1 lines. So theoretically, there's no limit to the number of people we can support.